cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the United States. Each year, about 1.1 million Americans suffer heart attacks, nearly half of which are fatal, accounting for one in five deaths. Heart attacks occur when there is a blockage in the coronary arteries that restricts blood flow and oxygen to the heart, causing damage and death to the heart tissue. Typical blockages occur due to the progression of an inflammatory disease of the artery called atherosclerosis. That is, the formation of plaque in the vessel wall that develops from LDL cholesterol. Studies have shown that a vast majority of heart attacks happen suddenly in patients that did not have significant narrowing of the arteries, pointing to another mechanism responsible for heart attacks called vulnerable plaques. A vulnerable plaque is a lipid pool within the artery, separated from the bloodstream by a thin fibrous cap. If the cap ruptures or erodes, the plaque contents are released into the bloodstream and blood clots quickly form, causing blockage of an artery. Approximately 70% of heart attacks are attributed to vulnerable plaques. Both detection and treatment of vulnerable plaques represent huge, unmet clinical needs. Vulnerable plaques often do not cause a significant narrowing of the arterial lumen and therefore are not detected with standard medical imaging modalities such as CT, MRI, coronary angiography, and external ultrasound. But progress is being made through new innovations. VH-IVUS, or Virtual Histology Intravascular Ultrasound, can generate images of the artery cross-section from an ultrasound catheter tracked through the vasculature, and can distinguish between low-risk intimal thickening and a higher-risk lesion. Drugs such as statins prevent approximately 30% of these events, but a vast majority still occur. To augment the benefits of statins, it has been proposed that diseased arteries can be treated directly with drugs delivered locally to the vulnerable plaques, thereby stabilizing them and preventing rupture. The idea is to improve the plaque condition by decreasing the lipid content, lessening inflammation, and reducing the tendency to form blood clots. In a typical drug delivery system, drug encapsulated nanoparticles are injected directly into the bloodstream. At 20 to 500 nanometers, these nanoparticles are small enough to be administered at the systemic level. Carried by the bloodstream, they can potentially reach any biological target. Some of the nanoparticles drift toward the artery wall facilitating local interactions with the endothelium. To enhance the specific recognition of the biological target, in this case, receptors expressed in and around the vulnerable plaque at the disease site, the nanoparticle surface is covered with ligand molecules and antibodies through nanoengineering. Through the formation of ligand receptor bonds, the particles firmly adhere to the vessel wall, withstanding the hydrodynamic forces that tend to dislodge them. From this location, the nanoparticles can release the encapsulated drug toward the extravascular space in the vessel wall. The released drug molecules can then propagate through the artery wall to exert therapeutic effect to the targeted region. In order to create a mathematical model, an artery segment can be idealized as a straight, three-dimensional cylindrical tube with blood represented as an incompressible Newtonian fluid. 
fully developed flow through a cylinder attains a parabolic velocity profile, which drives the nanoparticles through the bloodstream. The particle motion is governed by a linear scalar advection diffusion equation subjected to appropriate boundary conditions. At the inlet boundary of the artery, particles are released. At the outlet, a zero diffusive flux is assumed. The flux of particles that is diffused through the radial boundary is influenced by the wall shear rate, the particle size, and the probability of adhesion. The objective is to increase the probability of adhesion. The probability of a particle firmly adhering to the artery wall depends on a number of physiological parameters, such as the number of receptors overexpressed at the diseased wall, the wall shear stress, and hydrodynamic forces that tend to dislodge the particles, as well as certain particle design parameters, including the shape and size the number of ligands on the particle surface, and the affinity between the specific ligand receptor pairs. Creation of a patient-specific model begins by obtaining information from medical imaging modalities. These imaging devices generate stacks of cross-sectional images in which the biological substances are represented in pixels as grayscale intensities at each slice. Each type of biological substance, such as tissue, blood, and bone, is represented by a single intensity. After identifying the areas of interest, extraneous features are removed from the computational model. The segmented images can be used to automatically construct surface representations of the geometry of interest. Using isocontouring techniques, surfaces separating the different biological substances are identified. The surface represents the interface between the interior wall of the blood vessel and the blood. Through a skeletonization process, a center line is identified along each branch. These arterial path lines are used to build a three-dimensional solid fluid computational model. Templates are constructed for components of the arterial system, such as straight segments, bifurcations, trifurcations, etc. Here, each colored area represents a template. As seen from the detail, one can get very smooth and accurate representations of the junctures between the vessels, which is very important for accurate flow and stress analysis. The solid model generated contains regions that represent blood and the artery wall. The mesh resolution is adjusted to represent accurate boundary layer phenomena. All of these operations are performed in the parametric domain and then mapped onto the actual physical model. Finally, a solid NURBS mesh is constructed using isogeometric analysis. This constitutes the fluid structure computational model for the system. Simulations are then carried out to compute quantities such as flow velocity and wall stresses over the heart cycle. These modeling procedures can be utilized for many different applications. In the patient-specific coronary artery generated using this methodology, an idealized vulnerable plaque with a large lipid core and thin fibrous cap 
is placed in the left circumflex branch to simulate the diseased condition in a patient. At the inlet of this diseased left coronary artery segment, a catheter is placed through which drug encapsulated nanoparticles are injected both radially and axially over five cardiac cycles. A time-dependent pulsatile inflow condition is prescribed at the inlet. A computational fluid dynamics solver coupled to the scalar advection diffusion equation as described before is utilized to quantify the time evolution of nanoparticles and corresponding drug distribution in the artery. Results show that the injected nanoparticles reach the vessel wall and preferentially adhere to the targeted receptors, overexpressed at the vulnerable plaque endothelial surface, resulting in a higher particle surface concentration. The hydrophobic drug released from these nanoparticles is then recruited by the lipid core region such that there is a high local drug concentration within it. This is encouraging from a therapeutic point of view as targeted delivery of anti-inflammatory, lipid-lowering, and antithrombotic drugs may lead to sustained reduction in plaque progression and prevention of vulnerable plaque rupture. The computational tool developed can address important design questions, such as, given a desired drug concentration in a targeted region of an individual patient, what would be the optimum delivery location and mechanism, drug release rate, and nanoparticle surface characteristics, thereby personalizing and optimizing therapeutic intervention. This goes to the heart of addressing an unmet and critically important clinical need, namely the 770,000 heart attacks and 385,000 deaths in the United States each year attributed to vulnerable plaques.